In this demonstration video, we're going to be looking at the expected cash flow approach to estimating the amount of contingent liability. Uh, we're going to be using problem 13-8, and in this problem, we'll be looking at a product recall. Uh, this is very similar to a warranty expense, uh, except here we are, know that there is a particular problem, and we have to recall it. Any of you who have owned vehicles, there's a good chance that over the uh, life of the vehicle, uh, there may be one or more recalls. So let's see how we estimate the potential impact of this recall. We have this tire company. Uh, they have a particular tire that needs to be recalled at the end of 2011. Uh, we originally estimated uh, the recall cost to be $50 million. Uh, now we've got some experience in. We see that not every uh, customer is bringing back the tire. So now we have established ranges of the potential loss. We believe that there is a 20% chance that the loss amount will be $40 million, a 50% chance that it will be $30 million, and a 30% chance that it will just be $20 million. Since this is going out into the future, this liability uh, is going to be recorded at its fair value. Uh, to do that, we have to establish a discount rate. And GAAP allows companies to use just the risk-free rate of interest for this type of fair value. And at this period of time in the economy, the risk-free rate of interest is 5%. So we're first going to look at the expected cash flow approach that is allowed under GAAP uh, to estimate the liability at the end of 2011. So we're going to set up an Excel spreadsheet so that we can calculate the amount of the liability, prepare the journal entries, and record the entries in uh, T accounts for three accounts, the product recall expense, the product recall liability, and interest expense. Interest expense will be incurred because we're using fair value. So let's begin by putting in our range of potential losses. At the high, we believe we may have a $40 million exposure. The mid-range is $30 million. The low range, $20 million. All right, so at the $40 million range, we believe there's just a 20% chance. The mid-range of $30 million, we believe there's a 50% chance. And at the $20 million range, a 30% chance. We're going to use these percentages, these probability percentages, to come up with the probability weighted amount for the potential loss. And that is simply the loss amount times the probability. So we'll do that for each of our ranges. We'll take the potential loss, multiply it by the percentage, and that will give us our potential weighted average loss. We do that by adding the sum. Again, that is the sum of these three numbers. This is unadjusted for present value. We believe that we'll have to make this payment in one year. So we're going to figure out the present value of the liability. And in Excel, we're going to do that using our formulas. 
the $29 million is the future value. So we're going to go up to our formulas. We're going to look for financial. And we're going to pick the PV for present value. Again, in the problem, they tell us that the rate we're going to use is the risk-free rate of interest, which is 5%. We believe we're going to have to make this payment in one year. So the period is going to be one. We're going to skip over payment because this is not an annuity. And we're going to look at the future value. The amount we expect to pay in one year is the sum of our probabilities, which is 29,000. So we'll do that. We'll click OK. And that returns a present value of $27,119.50. $169,048, about. All right, so our journal entry that we're going to record in 2011 that's going to report on the probable payment for 2012 is going to be measured at present value. So we're going to make a journal entry for the recall expense And whether we classify this as an expense or a loss is going to be whether this is a normal business risk. Uh, for an auto parts company such as this tire company, uh, recalls are fairly common. So uh, in my judgment, I would say that this is an expense rather than a loss and should be reported in normal operating income. If this is an unusual outside of the normal day-to-day -day function, well, then you would, would call it a loss. So the value of that expense is going to be equal to the present value of the payout that we expect to be $29 million in one year. The present value is $27,619,000. The other side of this entry is going to be for a recall liability account, which will be our balance sheet account, and that's going to be for an equal amount. So at the end of 2011, we show a balance in the recall expense of 27619000 an equal amount in the product liability. Now, at the end of 2012, we will have made payment on this liability. The payment we're going to be making is going to be equal to $29 million. So we have to recognize first the difference between the present value at the end of 2011 and the actual payment. This is going to be an adjusting journal entry. The debit is going to be to interest expense. And that's going to be the difference between our estimate or payment amount of $29 million minus the present value at the end of 2011. Since we're recognizing the expense and we're not paying cash yet, the other side of that is going to be a credit to the liability account recall liability for an equal amount. In requirement four, it tells us that the actual amount of payment that was made at the end of 2012 is $30 million. Right now, 
in our product recall account, we're showing a credit balance of just 29 million. So if we write out a check to cover these costs for 30 million, we will be crediting cash for 30 million. Our debits will be for the recall liability and it's going to be at its current balance which was the entry for 2010 and the adjustment for the interest expense in 2012 or 29 billion which means we have an additional one million dollars and that is going to be debited to our recall expense in 2012 we don't have to make any type of correction on our prior financial statements and our debit is going to be for one million dollars 